Hello everyone. It's James again. And today I want to talk about something very important. As it's a topic that has been requested. And though we might have covered a few things regarding this topic today in the past. I think it's very important to talk about it again. But a bit more in detail. As I believe it's a big problem that affects a great many people that have been narcissistically abused. And what is this problem I'm talking about? It's agoraphobia. So. What is agoraphobia? Agoraphobia is the fear of places and situations that might cause panic, helplessness, or embarrassment. Agoraphobia is an anxiety disorder that often develops after one or more panic attacks. Symptoms include fear and avoidance of places and situations that might cause feelings of panic, entrapment, helplessness, or embarrassment. Now how does this tie to narcissistic abuse? Well in my opinion. This has big ties to childhood narcissistic abuse and trauma. Now though this can happen later in life from being exposed to narcissistic abuse by the way of a husband or wife. Or boyfriend or girlfriend. I believe a great many of people that suffer from this due to narcissistic abuse were likely narcissistically abused as children by a narcissist parent or parents. You see. One thing the narcissist parent or parents want you to feel is shame. They want you to feel like you don't belong anywhere. One thing narcissist parents will do is burn every bridge with the parents of your peers while growing up. So when you are around them they might mistreat you. You see. I've told my story before. Regarding my upbringing. And one key thing that happened to me was the mistreatment that was done to me by school teachers and by the parents of the other children in my class when I was in grade school. There was numerous times where the teachers would belittle me and make fun of me right in front of other students. And the truth is. I never felt anger towards what was going on. I just felt like I didn't want to be there. I would throw up on the way to school quite often. Just thinking about stepping through the doors of school and sitting down into my school desk chair. I was always made to feel nervous and afraid of what might happen to me minute to minute and day to day. I literally felt like I couldn't relax. And when certain moments came by where things seemed to be going my way and going well. Very quickly I would be stunned with more mistreatment and another bad situation happening. And while in this situation if I managed to make a friend in school. If they invited me to go over to their home to hang out. The parents knowing and not liking my mother would treat me really bad and say snide comments. As if holding me responsible for my mother's bad behavior. Also because I didn't live in the best of neighborhoods. I remember some of these parents. While spending time in my new friend's home. Would say. Hey James can I see your jacket for a moment? Confused as to why they needed to see my jacket. I would hand it over. And I would see them inspect my jacket and check the pockets to see if I had stolen something. When that was the last thing in my mind to do. I was just happy to have a friend. But it seemed in almost every situation. I was made to feel defective and like something was wrong with me. And when I moved from the neighborhood where all of this started at. And no one knew about any of this. I still walked on eggshells and felt like everything about myself was being looked at and inspected. As if I wasn't good enough. Going into a new friend's home always brought a feeling of fear and anxiety from the many years of being treated like a criminal and or a somehow defective child. Then when you add on top of this treatment as a child. Also being treated in a less than way as an adult. It starts to breed fear and feelings that they. Whoever they are. Won't like me. You might think you aren't far enough along in life. Everyone else has all of these wonderful stories to tell about places they've been and jobs they have. And you might feel like. You haven't accomplished much at all. And that you will be judged. You see narcissistic abuse starts its big stab into our life. When we were devalued. And not just when we were devalued by our narcissist parent or parents. But by others in life. You see. The role of the healthy parent. Is to protect their child against the evils of the world. And slowly teach them how to navigate such an evil world. The healthy parent. 
gives healthy praise for their child doing a good job at things. And they teach their child that losing when you did your best is okay too. But to try again. And again and again. And here's the thing. Just like we've talked about before. That narcissists can sniff out those that are or were narcissistically abused. Well the same is true for adults such as teachers and others that are responsible for the care of others' children. And they know they can get away with all kinds of stuff. For these adult narcissists. It's a free pass to do their narcissistically abusive routine and not be held responsible. And it does a lot of damage. I mean a lot of damage. And this can even affect those that appear to be outgoing. You would be amazed there are many outgoing people that deal with this fear all of the time. You see. When you grow up in a home with narcissistic abuse. You have no roots to be proud of. And that is the role of family. When all else fails. You have family to fall back on. If you have a brother or sister to hang out with that you love and that loves you. Who cares what others have to say? Well narcissistic abuse strips this from you. And you walk into places where others seem to have it all together. Or so you think. And you feel like you don't belong at all. And you second guess everything about yourself and the situation. And even though we talk about second guessing in a way where we are overthinking. We've been in way too many situations. More than we can count. Where we were judged for no good reason. And where we were treated less than for no good reason and like we didn't belong. But here's what I learned over time. There are places where you will go in life. Where you will be treated not only well but you will be treated great. But when you have a version of agoraphobia. You might not give yourself a chance to find out the fact there are people that will for real like you. Because if someone will ask you to go over to their house to play a board game with others you might not have met. You will likely feel the hot sweat come over your body. And the fearful feeling you always felt as a child. The key that I learned for myself. And it's not always perfect. But I would force myself to go. And use it as a learning experience. And I would give myself an out so I could leave early in case I wasn't feeling comfortable. Here's the thing. I love interacting with people. I really really do. But I too have triggers where when I get invited to go a certain place. This weird fear sets in and I'm looking for every reason to say no. Now sometimes no is a good thing to say if it's truly a bad situation to take part in. Or bad people. So never be afraid to say no in those situations. But the only way I've been able to deal with certain situations. Is to let the horrible feeling go through its course. And going to such a place with an out to leave early if need be. Let them know you have to get up early for whatever reason and you might have to leave early. And if while you're there. If people are asking you personal questions. Where you are feeling like everyone is measuring who has what and what the pecking order is. Just give a polite answer. If you have a great office job. Wonderful. If you are a greeter at Walmart. Don't let anyone make you feel ashamed for that. If you are a hard worker. You are a hard worker. You see. What I've learned and I still have to remind myself of to this day. Is that the people that really want to be your friend won't care what you have or don't have. They won't. And you see. We've gotten into this world where if you don't have this or that. Or you aren't living like this or that. Then you are deemed a loser. Stay away from those people. And be glad they showed you who they are. You see. It wasn't having financial issues as a child that was my problem. It was having a narcissist mother that was the problem. And for some it might be a narcissist father. Or a narcissist mother and father combo. Because you see. Even if you are poor. If you have family. If you have the love of your brother or sister. And of your mother and father. It doesn't matter what others say. And that's one of the reasons why the narcissist parent wants to pit the other children in the house against you. So for one. You can't escape so easily. And secondly, 
so anything outside of the house that happens to you, you won't have any protection against. And having that family love is what regulates things and keeps things stable. If my teachers treated me like the way they did and I had my mother and father to defend me, and my brother and I to be each other's friend, it wouldn't have mattered. But everything outside of the house affected me so. Much like it affected much of you. And that's where the fear comes from going outside for those that were narcissistically abused. Because there was no protection then. And you feel like there is no protection now. And this feeling comes over some of the toughest people. There are some people that you would never think that have such feelings that do. Simply because when they were young. They were made to feel completely unsafe with everyone and everything that was around them. And how do I deal with such feelings when they happen? The honest truth is I just do the best that I can. And I try to do my best to be happy when people show me that they aren't really my friend. That at least I learned the lesson early on. And not always do I get this feeling. But it will happen from time to time. That feeling like I don't belong. And that I will be judged harshly. But again. I have to remember. Or remind myself. If they are treating me this way. Then they are telling me clearly they were never my friend to begin with. And that includes others they bring you around. Here's the thing. I think at the age of being an adult. We know what those around us are going to do and say after a while. And if you are brought around let's say someone's parents for the first time. And they are mistreating you. There is a good chance the person that is bringing you around these people knew they would treat you this way. They just wanted to see it happen. There is an old saying. Go where you are appreciated. And if you are appreciated today and tomorrow you are not. Again. Use it as a learning lesson. That they showed you who and what they were about. Because you see. Mistakes of how you see people can still happen. When you learn about narcissism. You might think you've met the best friend in the world. Or someone that you think is amazing to date. And they were just hiding who they truly were and sprung it upon you in a setting that would make you extremely uncomfortable. Because narcissists love the shock value. And this is something I will talk more about. That narcissists will never have genuine interactions with you. It's all a game. All the while they are talking to you. You are thinking innocently you are making a new friend. But for them. Every word said is part of a bigger plot to make you think that they are your friend. In order to lure you into a situation where you are either mistreated or you are just dropped like they never ever knew you. This is something not only adults do. But this happens to a great many of children as well. And possibly to many of you when you were growing up. You make friends with someone. You think things are going well. Then you are invited to hang out with a group. You go to this group and then the mistreatment starts. Others start to put you down while your so-called friend pretends like they don't know you. Or they start putting you down in front of others themselves. Or they invite you someplace. You get ready to go and have a great time. And you show up. And no one is there. You recheck your times to make sure you didn't get the times wrong. And you recheck the address too. You call your friend. And in this day and age you text them. And you get no response back. All of this big build up. To make you feel accepted and cared for. Only to leave you standing outside of a locked building by yourself with no answers. You see. Likely you grew up with no advocate. And with no one to care. Let's say something like this happens. And you are super tight with your brother or sister. And you call them and let them know what happened. And they come and pick you up. They get you to laugh about it. They tell you to forget those jerks. They weren't your real friends anyways. And you go to a movie and get a hamburger afterwards. I used to fantasize I had a relationship like that with my golden child brother. Which was completely the opposite. He didn't want me oddly enough to be there for him. And he never wanted to be there for me. Because my narcissist mother knew that if she wanted to have complete control over our home. 
she had to drive my father out of the home. Which she did legally. And then he passed away. And then she had to make sure my brother hated me with everything he had inside of himself. And she was successful. So in nearly every hard situation I had to deal with. I was by myself. But not really. God was with me. Even when I didn't know it. He was there. But there was always something in me that wanted to fight for a better life. But when I was younger. I put up with so much disrespect. From others and their parents. Again. If you let's say meet a nice new person that you are dating and you go over to their parents or siblings home to meet for the first time. And they treat you like a world class loser and you haven't done anything wrong to them. Please see that as a possible red flag to run. Because you see. If this new person that you are with cares about you at all. They will speak about you very highly to their brothers and sisters and parents. And if they are terrible people and the person that you are dating is a decent person. They will let you know ahead of time of what you can expect and to not take it seriously. And even then. They will be the buffer between you and them. Because that's their family not yours. And it's things like that. That I started to look at. Again. Go where you are appreciated and cared about. And if there is something about your life that is innocent and normal. That you are judged over. Yes. That stunned feeling will hit you. It hits all of us when it happens. But let it happen. And let it go away. And when it goes away. Take a step back and be thankful. Be so thankful they showed you who they were. And believe you me. It's so so sad. When you think someone is such a wonderful person. And then they out of the blue mistreat you. It can and does hurt. But just know. There are those that will appreciate you. I've told the story of my good friend that passed away a while back. She was such a wonderful wonderful woman. I never judged her and she never judged me. She was so upset that I didn't have a good girlfriend to be with. She was quite a bit older than me and our relationship was in no way a romantic one. But she used to tell me. James. You are a kind loving and strong man. You have been through a lot. And it bothers me so much to see someone like you alone. We were great consistent friends for years with never an issue. When I was around her I felt loved and cared for. And at her wake. I was told by those there celebrating her life. That she considered me her very best friend. And that she loved me very much. And it's this type of friendship that makes me explore new things in life. Carefully explore them. And admittedly so. My trust is extremely low. But I still try to explore within reason. You see. I've talked about before. It's very common for those that were narcissistically abused to recheck their locked doors for minutes and even hours on end before they go to sleep or leave their home. And many of us triple check our closets and under our beds. And many of us. Even when we think we are are doing great. We'll get an opportunity to go somewhere or do something. And that feelings of fear will cripple us from moving forward. Not every time. But enough for us to notice. You see. Even if your narcissist has passed away. Meaning your parent or parents. This is the world they want you to live in alone. Scared and helpless. And I don't have the best answers for you. I really don't. Because everyone is different. But I just had to understand. That if I am mistreated again. To not go back. And to be thankful they showed me who they are. And that I've not valued in their eyes. And to go where I'm appreciated. Or at bare minimum liked. And to take things one step at a time. That's all we can do. Because these are the many problems that can happen to those that grew up like we did. And as we've talked about. This is what society. Or the societal narcissists want for everyone. To be scared of the person standing next to you. Scared to have a friend. And scared to have a person in your life that you love. I say. Do your best to be careful. 
and don't get mad at yourself if you get scared. Because please know. You aren't the only one that feels that way. There are others in your boat too. And if you need help. Make sure you find help in an expert that deals in narcissistic abuse. They are hard to find. But if you need such help. Seek it. Because you have the right to have a happy life. A life with some adventure. Some laughter and some good times. Don't let the narcissist steal your joy from you. Please know God loves you. And he is with you. And if someone mistreats you. Please see it as a gift from God. He gave you a gift of being able to see this person should be avoided. Don't get sad about it. Be glad about it if you can. And keep moving forward. Well that's all I have for now. Please let me know your thoughts. I would like to know. And if you haven't subscribed yet. Please do so. And share if you can. Because the more people see this information. The more it will get recommended to others by the way of this platform we are on. With that said. I do hope your day is blessed. And until next time. Bye for now. And be good to yourself.